Well, hello everyone, and we hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. We're very pleased to welcome you to our webinar to learn more about how Mattermost can help your Agile teams work more efficiently. My name is Miriam Sani, and I'm with the marketing team here at C Prime. So let's get started. It is with great pleasure uh, that I introduce our esteemed speakers for today. We're very happy to welcome Corey Holland from Mattermost. Corey is the CTO and co-founder of Mattermost, uh, creators of the open source enterprise messaging workspace built for privacy conscious organizations. And prior to Mattermost, he founded Tempo AI, a machine intelligence startup that was spun, spun out from Stanford Research Institute and was acquired by Salesforce.com. Before that, Corey served as an engineering manager and architect for Microsoft Office in its enterprise software business across the SharePoint and business intelligent product lines. So welcome Corey, thanks for joining us. Our next speaker and interviewer today is Dan Frost from C Prime. Dan is Director of uh, Partnerships and Strategic Alliances, uh, and he is particularly adept at scale at solving account challenges, garnering internal resources, and managing relationships with our enterprise partners. Uh, he was previously Director of Customer Success and is really passionate about business outcomes. And he lives in the beautiful mountains of Bozeman, Montana. All right. Well, thank you for the kind introduction, Miriam, and uh, welcome, everybody, um, to today's session. Uh, my name is Dan Frost, as uh, Miriam introduced me uh, with C Prime. Uh, this is kind of the flow we're going to go through, and um, something that we decided, oh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, is that um, instead of having the, uh, you know, Corey and Dan behind the official podiums, uh, reading the script, we thought we'd make this a little bit more um, casual, uh, a little bit more um, kind of interview, uh, question response, um, just a, a more relaxed way to kind of probe into some of these questions. Um, so the first thing I actually wanted to start, which I'm sure a lot of folks uh, want to know, is, um, well, first, let me welcome Corey. Thank you for joining us. This is fun to have you guys here. Um, would you mind uh, just getting us started by telling us a little bit about Mattermost? Yeah, sure. So Mattermost is an open source project um, where basically we bill ourselves as sort of high trust messaging for the enterprise. Um, uh, we're an open source alternative to things like Slack or HipChat. Um, we, um, our main focus is running on-prem and in your private cloud. Uh, if you're familiar with stuff, with a pro products like Slack or HipChat, then you kind of know what Mattermost is. Uh, if you're not familiar with those products, then we're uh, basically a topic-based or channel-based communication platform, um, and we're really focused on intercompany communication. So, you know, communication within your, your team that you work on. That's kind of where we're focused. Thanks, Corey. So, thinking about the kind of problems that you solve, um, what are some of these kind of industry challenges that folks um, typically come across? Yeah, I mean, what we find is, you know, everyone's looking uh, for a smarter, more efficient way to collaborate, right? Um, as globalization continues, you know, teams are becoming more distributed. Um, you know, you need effective collaboration tools that can, that can go across things like people's teams, departments, and locations, right? Uh, so we find a lot of, a lot of, a lot of this industry is coming, you know, from that viewpoint. You know, they 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 want to unlock their vast silos of information, right? Lots of times, it's it's siloed in emails or, or some other system, um, and so they're using, a, you know, a channel-based or topic-based communication to unlock that. Um, everyone wants seamless integrations, right? They want the information at your fingertips of where you work. Um, and and the reality is, you know, our customers just want a more modern-based sort of communication system. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the challenges become then how do you roll that out to large enterprises? Like, how do you meet their specific needs? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, great, great answer. Um, so then in particular, what is it about Mattermost? Like, why do folks come to you? You know, when you're engaging development teams or operations teams or, um, you know, just out at some of these big events and people come to you to say, Mattermost, like, you're the you're the uh, answer to all my uh, questions or needs. Uh, I'm just curious what's what's driving people your way. Yeah, I mean, for, for us, it really boils down to kind of two things. Um, one is typically or usually like data sovereignty. There is some security requirement or some posture where you want to own your own data. Uh, we do really well in that space. 
Uh, the other one is just sort of high autonomy or high flexibility, right? The ability, you know, what open source gives us is that ability for, for, for users and customers to, to customize the product, to meet their needs, right? Um, and so we, we find that in sort of that everyday life, right? Where these large enterprises want this sort of modern communication system, but they don't necessarily want to depend on a SaaS app and a SaaS app having access to their data, right? They also want high autonomy in the sense that Lots of times we're focused on that DevOps community. And so they want to start connecting this, you know, Mattermost up to sensitive things, right, in their, in their environment. And that's kind of where we step in and do really well, um, is, is satisfying both those needs, right? Satisfying a really high data sovereignty requirement uh, with a really high uh, flexibility in terms of end users being able to do what they want to do with the product. Yeah, that, that's great. I, I want to dive into that a little bit. Uh, but before we do, um, let's do another poll question. All right, thanks, Dan. So for our, um, oh, sorry about that. All right, so for our second question, uh, we just want to know, like, what is the main chat communication tool that you use in your organization? Mattermost, Microsoft Teams, Slack, HipChat, another one? Uh, or none at all. And we'll give everyone a couple seconds to answer the poll. And we'll end the poll. So uh, once again, Dan, we, uh, we are kind of all over the place. And again, uh, for those of you who answered other, uh, we're curious to know what other types of communication tools uh, that you use. So about 15% matter most, 25% uh, on Microsoft Teams, 30% on Slack, HipChat. So a wide variety. Uh, is this something that um, surprises you or uh, that you think, you know, that, that there's something there? The, it doesn't surprise me. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, what we no, find, go ahead, Corey. Uh, well, so, for, sorry, Dan. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. What we find in, what we find, especially in enterprises, is there's a lot of variability, right? And I would be surprised. There's probably not a way, a good way to ask that question, but which one of those people actually use multiple of those solutions as well. Uh, we find that to be a very common problem as well, right? Um, and so I, I think there's always gonna be specific products for specific needs. Um, and you know, each of those are kind of focused in different areas. So that's kind of one. Uh, the second one is when you get to larger organizations, lots of times they're running multiple of these, right? Um, and so it, for me, at least it's not super surprising. Okay. Yeah, I think what, what the other interesting thing about that poll question is that nobody checked the box for none. So uh, everybody here is at least using uh, some tool for real-time communication. Cool. Let's keep moving along. So uh, you were mentioning, um, you know, this notion of kind of uh, channel-based uh, com real-time communication, uh, something uh, where data sovereignty is, is really important. I wanted to go a little bit deeper on that. And my next question is, can you give me a few examples of, of like how Mattermost can help or get a little bit more specific? Yeah, sure. Um, let me talk about an interesting example. Um, it involves a, a really large bank. Um, they use us in sort of a infosec incident response sort of scenario. Um, and it's a really interesting scenario. It's, you know, they have real numbers where we've kind of dropped their response times from like 20 minutes down to one minute. And what they basically do is they have all their InfoSec analysis tools that are running. Um, when, they, when they pop or when they get an alert, something's going wrong or they might have a security incident, um, their tools automatically create a channel in Mattermost and automatically assign all the security, the security researchers on call into the channel, right? So immediately as soon as they and like i said it's a very large bank right they they're getting targeted by you know nation state kind of actors they need to get to a resolution or at least understanding of what's going on really quickly like is this a real incident is this a false positive what's going on and so they kind of add all that security information into the channel they add all their security researchers into the channel or engineers into the channel as well and what you have is like this classic example where you have this sort of shared history or shared command line where the security researchers are investigating the details of the logs, analyzing what's going on, figuring out if this is a real security um, uh, issue that they need to respond to or is it a false positive, right? And a whole bunch of time goes on, a whole bunch of work happens in the channel. Um, let's say 
security issue resolved, um, <clears throat> they actually end up exporting that secure, that all of that information in that channel uh, into a PDF document and submitting it to one of their sort of um, legacy um, auditing systems that they're required to through, you know, because of a bunch of regulation, they have to identify these things and submit them in there. Um, and so that for us, that's kind of one really interesting example where because we're running behind the firewall, we, you know, Mattermost itself can have access to a lot of these systems that you normally wouldn't necessarily grant it access to. Uh, so that's a one really interesting use case that we see lots of times. Another one is a little bit, is one that's a little more forward thinking. It's actually coming from Uber. Um, so as a general principle around Mattermost, we have this idea of we want to embed applications into Mattermost, right? And you kind of saw the large bank example where they're embedding, you know, security analysis tools into Mattermost. It makes a lot of sense. Most people kind of understand that they get that. If you've been in a communication platform, you kind of understand that. The other interesting thing we do, we think a lot about is, you know, what does it look like to embed Mattermost into other applications? And Uber's done something really interesting where they actually have created a Chrome extension. Uh, and in that Chrome extension, it's actually Mattermost running. Um, and it's contextual to what is on the web page, right? So if you're looking at Gmail, and if you, are, if you and I are having a conversation in Gmail, it's actually surfacing the Mattermost chat messages right there contextually uh, to Gmail, right? And you can see the real power of this concept, right? Being able to embed uh, Mattermost into other applications, right? Whether it be you have a corporate directory um, and you want your own little Mattermost chat widget in the lower right, and you don't want to go out, like you're chatting on Mattermost from that sort of corporate directory side, but the person receiving the message is actually still in their normal day-to-day -day Mattermost instance. Um, and so that's a really interesting use case that we see a lot of people want to do as well, right? Uh, when you talk about sort of that extreme flexibility of open source of being able to, you know, embed Mattermost into other things, into your, your other applications within your, within your, within your company, right? And so those are kind of two examples that, that for us are kind of really interesting. One's of kind of a bread and butter, like we see that InfoSec sort of security response stuff, you know, a lot. The other one's kind of more forward thinking and more interesting in terms of, of areas that we would like to go to. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's, that's very fascinating. And actually in uh, your answer of that question, you uh, positioned it in the way I was gonna ask my next one of just, um, trying to surface what, what are like the more common use cases that you get asked about for things that kind of extend beyond just simple chat. Um, are there any others you want to add? Yeah, I mean, obviously for us, you know, um, chat ops, you know, DevOps chat ops is an area where we kind of is our sweet spot. It's an area where we do really well. Um, and that's, you know, most people want that shared command line or shared history of working through a problem. Um, you know, it, Using systems like email, the information is siloed, it's inherently private, it causes a lot of problems or access to information. Um, so one I didn't actually talk about, another scenario we see quite a bit, which is similar, similar to the InfoSec one, is we just see a war room scenario, right? Um, we have um, lots of customers who have a war room. Um, when you're having an out a product outage, um, everyone joins that war room. And you can think of it in terms of that sort of sh shared command line experience, right? Uh, let's say logs get added to that war room. You have a whole bunch of eyeballs pouring over the problem. What makes that fascinating is because uh, typically these war rooms are public or semi-public, you have a bunch of interesting lurkers, right? People who aren't necessarily responding to the outage, but just curious and helping out, right? And that's where we see a lot of that huge benefit of that sort of shared history or shared command line, right? Because a typical scenario is some other random person who's not on call is just happening to looking at the logs that are in the sort of shared history. And they're like, hey, it doesn't like, you know, doesn't line, you know, 57 look like a problem, right? And the person who's responding to the, the incident or the subject matter expert is basically looking to, oh yeah, I think that is a problem, right? And so because of that sort of shared experience, uh, you get to that sort of quick uh, resolution. And we see that in just a general war room scenario, right? And what's really interesting is, it becomes really chat ops centric or almost like an app backplane at that point. You know, we have a lot of uh, customers who where their bots and plugins are pumping more messages into a channel than a human is, right? Um, and so when, you know, when half of your messages are starting to come from bots or plugins, that's a really interesting scenario to talk about in terms of how, you know, you're, you're, you're using Mattermost as almost like this app backplane of mixing structured data and unstructured data. And those for us are very fast, fascinating 
sort of uses to talk about. Very cool. Um, you mentioned having systems uh, pump data in, and uh, um, that kind of leads right into my next question. Like, what are the, um, in your opinion, what are the more powerful integrations that you're seeing, and how are they helping folks? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's, it's what we call our DevOps integration tool set. Like I said, that, that's a large area where we're focused on. Uh, you know, we're really focused on sort of what we call V2 of that tool set which is just building really rich bi-directional plugins. Um, so we talk about things like, you know, deep, deep integration or rich integration with Jira, uh, deep or rich integration with things like, you know, GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, uh, deep or rich integration with things like Jenkins. Um, and for us, what that, you know, what deep really means is bi-directional, right? You really want, you really want that communication going both ways, right? When I do something in, let's say, Jira, something happens in Mattermost. And when I do something in Mattermost, something happens in Jira. Um, you know, that, that's kind of our sweet spot. That's where obviously we focus a lot of our time. But you it is also interesting because you see a lot of these, you know, enterprise customers who have legacy applications having these really long-tailed legacy products that they want to integrate with. So what we find is depending on the organization, um, they can have some really, um, they can have some really interesting integrations that, that don't surface for most people. Um, but for us, it's that DevOps tool set for sure. So, uh, great answer. Um, you know, C Prime, uh, we're a, a key partner of Atlassian. We're we're a, a, a large um, platinum solution partner um, with Atlassian. Um, how do you connect with Jira? Just talk yeah, me that, through it. Yeah, so, so I mean, there, there's a bunch of different ways. Um, you know, most people start with things like webhooks and slash commands, right? Um, our webhooks and slash commands are sort of wire level protocol compatible with Slack. Um, you know, so 99 times out of 100, if it works in Slack, it works in Mattermost. Um, we also, there's also a, a Jira plugin um, that provides a lot more rich functionality. Um, it includes things like creating issues from Mattermost or linking to existing threads. I mean, so that's what we find, right, is a lot of, um, a lot of people start creating with cart using integrations. They might rely on a partner like yourself to go help uh, either build or build richer functionality in these integrations or specific workflows that they need. Um, and that's where we really find the power of this, you know, coming through in our plugin architecture, right? Because the reality is, is everyone's business, especially at that sort of, you know, enterprise level, everyone's business is slightly different, right? And everyone needs or wants something slightly customized to their environment. What, whether you're a manufacturer and you have a whole bunch of automation and manufacturing process around that, um, around, you know, manufacturing equipment, whether you're a software company and you have, you know, automation or DevOps or chat ops automation around that. Um, and so that, that's kind of where we see really interesting scenarios. Um, I think that, you know, that flexibility in terms of how we connect to different things, um, and being able to pump data into Mattermost um, and have that all shared in Mattermost is where you, like I said, is where you really start to see that power of topic-based or channel-based communication. Great, great. Now we, you know, you probably know C Prime. Uh, we're an advanced tier partner with uh, AWS, um, so we spend a lot of time uh, working with folks who. Are, t are taking this journey um, to the public cloud, AWS in particular. Um, when I think about Mattermost, I think about um, you being able to leverage, um, you know, uh, opportunities where um, folks are running their own hardware, like you said, data sovereignty and that control is really important. Um, where does like this whole, like the term hybrid ar architecture comes up all the time. Um, like folks are, you know, some folks are all in a public cloud, some folks, um, but then like the other group is, is a group that will likely um, utilize a hybrid structure uh, where they're managing um, a data center of their own, um, but maybe, maybe utilizing AWS for DR or backup. Um, where does this kind of come into play for, for Mattermost? Yeah, I mean, th this is definitely a space where we think a lot about, we think a lot about in terms of you know, hybrid in different kinds of ways, hybrid in exactly that, like uh, failing over to a cloud provider or vice versa, or you know, failing over between clouds. We also think of it in terms of federation. Um, so we, we do some, you know, so, so there, there's a couple of different scenarios here. You know, one is, you know, we're, we're, we're big believers in things like Kubernetes, so we're doing a lot of work in that area. 
um, to make some of this stuff uh, run more smoothly. So uh, you can sort of hybridize these, these different cloud offerings. But one of the things we think a lot about too, and this is a little bit more forward thinking, it's not like so we have any offering here, it's just what it means to federate across cloud and on-prem, right? Um, we're, we're, fa we're, we're sort of fascinated by the GitHub announcement where they talked about um, how their cloud offering and their on-prem offering, you know, you can share the same user between those two things. And what we see is we see a lot of our customers wanting to go that way as well. Uh, you know, we, we have some, you know, some subset of our customers, let's say have a top secret division, right? Um, they're chatting in Mattermost. Um, they want to chat to a, to a division um, outside of that top secret division. So how do you federate those two servers together, right? And then how do you maybe do that across the cloud? Um, so it's an area we spend a lot of time future, you know, sort of, this is maybe more future thinking, but we spend a lot of time thinking about that area in terms of that complex problem. But even today we have customers doing this, um, you know, because of the ability to sort of uh, white level the app or do things, you, you know, in your own sort of environment, uh, we have customers who, have, who run multiple instances of Mattermost, depending on, you know, what kind of information they want to display to users. Um, and so, so it, there's, you know, it's, it's a really fascinating sort of future stuff. I mean, there's the stuff that people can day to do today in terms of being able to fail over between clouds and migrate between clouds and that's all interesting but then for you know for us thinking about the future the future stuff which is how do you you know how does a true like federated hybrid architecture work across that and what would that mean um, and that that gets me excited or us excited to kind of think about that in the, in the long run like what does that look like yeah very interesting all right i want to put you on the spot a little bit um you know we see slack we see teams um we did a lot of uh, work with HipChat before um, that kind of went away. Um, how do you, you know, somebody's coming to you saying, you know, these are these are the bigs. Um, what's, uh, you know, what's special about Mattermost, or or why should I go with Mattermost? Yeah, no, great question. I mean, the, the, for us, you know, our, our sweet spot is sort of DevOps first, right? Um, and we kind of start there and grow out from there, but it it, it the key thing to kind of mention is, you know, you want that freedom and autonomy to extend the platform, right? But you want it to be within the context of your security or your organization security. And for us, that's where we really shine, right? Um, you know, we land in DevOps and because of our flexibility, we can integrate into those legacy systems, right? Because we can run on-prem, because we can run behind your firewall because we can pass your internal security audits, right? Um, um, and like I said, you may have legacy applications that you're never gonna punch a hole through the firewall to expose, right? But because Mattermost is there, you can kind of connect it to everything, right? And we have really large enterprise customers doing that, right? They have so many legacy systems, um, things that they've kind of walled garden off, right? They're not in, a, in terms of a security sort of threat or aspect, right? They would never expose them, never want to, or even start going down that path. But because we're running in that sort of in-between spot, um, we find a lot of customers being very interested in that scenario, right? The ability kind of that extreme flexibility that the platform gives you, that open source gives you, so that the autonomy that that gives you, but still running within your organization's, you know, sort of security context. I think that's where we really shine. Um, and, you know, not to say, you know, I mean, you know, Slack and Microsoft Teams are both great products, but they're kind of focused in different areas. That was a both informative and wonderfully diplomatic answer. Well done. <laughs> um, so we've been talking a lot. Um, I wanted to give you an opportunity to um, do a little bit of show and tell. Um, you know, we didn't really talk about a structure of a demo or anything like that, but um, sometimes I just kind of like to leave that in, into, uh, put it into the uh, uh, expert's hands. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm going to stop my share. And do you have uh, something you'd like to show us? Sure. All right. I'm going to stop my share here real quick. And you should be able to take it over. All right. Can you see my screen? Cool. Okay. Um, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so, so I was just going to share some things that some of the, the interesting things that I talked about. Um, this is actually our community server, community.mattermost.com. Um, it has, I don't I think close to 6,000 people on this server. This is where all the Mattermost staff sits with our open source community. It's where kind of we do all of our real work. Um, this is actually a dog food server. It's a nightly build. Um, 
So lots of times you'll see interesting things stuff here before the product is released. Um, but I just want to showcase a few quick, really interesting things, you know, uh, especially maybe to compare and contrast us against some of the other existing solutions out there. So we have this whole plugin framework or plugin architecture, and our belief is that those plugins need to be really rich and bidirectional. And if you remember, I've talked about um, Jira and GitHub, and so I'll, I'll kind of show those off really quick. Um, so in Jira, we actually have this rich integration where you can create uh, an issue right in line. So our plugin, this is all written as a plugin. This isn't part of the Mattermost base product. Uh, this is just a plugin that you install after the fact. So anything you see me doing here, any plugin creator could do, right? So you could take over the drop-down menu. You can actually service your own dialogues. This one is actually integrated into our Jira instance. So it's pulling, you know, information from our Jira instance. Uh, as soon as I do that, it links all the information. I'm not actually going to cre create, because like I said, this is really hooked up to ours. Um, but if I were, what it would do is it actually create a bidirectional link. Uh, it would create a link between um, Jira. It would link that Jira ticket to this Mattermost thread. Um, and that Mattermost thread would be linked to that Jira ticket. Um, so that's a really powerful use case. Another one is where we, you know, is GitHub or GitLab. Uh, so if you look over here in the left-hand side, we actually have um, a GitHub plugin. Uh, oops. GitHub. Um, so we actually have a GitHub plugin. This plugin actually comes with its own bot. So this bot sends me notifications. You know, I have one pull request. You guys probably won't see this, but I have one, I have one pull request that needs review. If I click this, it actually automatically opens up um, in my browser, the pull request that I need to go review and do something on. Um, so those are kind of ones that are really, you know, interesting that, that kind of show off the power of the ability to kind of take over the team sidebar and render whatever you want. Uh, one really cool one that, that I love to talk about, let me go back to my channel so I don't mess anything up, um, is we have this one called the Draw Plugin. This was actually written by one of our own team members. And once again, everything you see here is just a plugin. This doesn't ship natively. It's something that uh, you could do as your own pro plugin author. Uh, one of our, our, our engineers on our team was frustrated that he can't quickly annotate um, 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 screenshots. So he actually wrote this plugin, which is really cool. And we use it all the time, or at least I use it all the time to file bugs. So you can draw, but one of the really cool things is you can draw really quickly on an image. So here I just uploaded this image. I can come in and say, oh, the bug is right here. I can quickly draw on that image and I can just upload it into the channel. Um, and like I said, all of that, what you saw, the modal, the draw plugin, all of that is, is an external plugin to the application. And those are just kind of three really quick, um, interesting examples that might, you know, contrast us to some of the, the competitors out there. Those are things that I use daily. I use that Jira plugin uh, daily. I use the GitHub plugin in my workflow daily, and I use that draw plugin daily in my workflow. Um, so those are kind of three really quick examples. Um, sorry, I should have gave a little, for those who aren't familiar, like I said, it's a, this is a channel-based communication system. You have channels down the left, you have channels of, you know, that channel or topic has information in the center channel. Um, you can see things like markdown tables being rendered. Uh, if I edit this, oops, delete. if I edit this, it's just a markdown table. Um, same thing, code snippets. So if I edit this, this is just a Go code snippet. And when I when it gets rendered, it gets rendered as a really nice snippet. So that's kind of a really high level, really quick um, um, example of some of the more interesting use cases in Mattermost. That's very cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, let me fire mine back up here. All right, I'm hoping y'all can see my screen or right, somebody will do yep. something to inform me if you can't. Um, okay, cool. So this has been, I think a pretty compelling uh, showcase for, you know, Mattermost the platform and, um, and you know, just Mattermost the company, a good way for folks to get to know you. Um, the last uh, couple questions I have for you are, even more free form than this demo or uh, this uh, webinar already has been. And I think about how we've, we've honed in on like key use cases and why companies come to you and new versus your competitors. And um, it's fun stuff, but it's all uh, very value driven and very serious. Um, I, I always find that when I come talk to folks like you and other technology companies, that when you sit down with somebody kind of after a meeting's over, they'll be like, oh, but here's this thing that we do all the time, or here's this thing that I use. Um, you know, like you mentioned, like your, um, you know, Git integrations and stuff like that. 
Um, can you share with us just like some of the, like the little things or nuanced things or, or, you know, aspects of matter most that might not come up in a, you know, real targeted presentation like this, but, but you think are just fun and make the product wonderful. Yes. Let me think. Uh, I think, yeah. I mean, so I, there's a, there's probably a few, there, there's one I didn't show in the product, uh, which is really powerful. We call it post interception. So you can actually hook messages and you can rewrite those messages before they go into the system of record. Um, and it's a really powerful concept. It's a great business concept in the sense of, let's say someone types in their credit card number or social security number, and you just want to rewrite that out of your database uh, before it gives them the system of record before anybody sees it. So it's a really powerful business use case there. But we actually use that at Mattermost to rewrite some um, some of our messages with links to our help documentation. Um, so on our community server, you know, there's always this tribal knowledge that builds up, right? Uh, one of them that's built up in our company is we have this thing, the saying called I'm zero out of five or I'm five out of five, right? Zero out of five means I don't care. Here's my input, do whatever you want with it. Five out of five means like, you know, I'm really passionate about this. I'm willing to die on my sword by it. And you know, it's really hard to convey some of that information in a text-based system. So all we do is we use that post intercept hook to hook that message and then rewrite it with a link to our help documentation. So when you use, when, when you see our like staff members using some of their internal lingo in a channel, like we have this word called mana, which is an estimate of time. Uh, we, we abbreviate things like RHS for right-hand side or LHS for left-hand side, right? And it's really funny, previously you used to see all these conversations where somebody's taught, where especially a staff member's talking with a community member and they say like, oh yeah, just click on the LHS. And the person's like, what's the LHS, right? Well, now when they say that, it just auto links the documentation and you get this nice little link in between the two. Um, they're just little quirky things like that that make your productivity so uh, efficient. Um, the other interesting one is, is one that's super nerdy. Um, does, you know, it, it gets a lot of attention within that kind of nerdy community. It's called Matterhorn. Um, it is actually developed by um, an external uh, bunch of external contributors, and it's a command line interface for Mattermost. Um, so all of our all of our front ends are you know open sourced. You know, we have our web app, we have our desktop app, we have our mobile app. Uh, but somebody actually went off and wrote one that just runs in the command line. And so that's kind of a, you know, a really low level nerdy one that people, you know, that there's some subset of the audience that they really love. Um, so that, that's kind of cool, right? If you're SSHing into a system and that's where you work most of the time um, and you just want a command line interface in the Mattermost, like you have it. And I think those are kind of the two, you know, kind of interesting use cases that don't necessarily apply to a really broad audience, but for those particular people who make their life extremely good. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really cool. Um, so lastly, what's uh, what's next for y'all? I mean, uh, it's probably go without saying that um, you know things will change. I'm asking Corey to speculate or talk about the future, so don't don't hold them too accountable. But I'm just curious, like what are, what's the next phase for uh, for Mattermost? Yeah, no, I mean for for us, you know, the next phase for us is really you know, taking Mattermost to that next level and, and, and Mattermost as an OS and Mattermost as an application platform. Like we, we've really thought of it from the beginning like that. For those who have been with us, you know, the original binary was actually named platform. The original repository was named platform. Um, but we're now, I think, just getting started to execute on that vision. So we'll say things like, you know, internally lots of times, like if you were to, you know, if you would imagine Mattermost as a platform, what other open source suite of applications would you build on top of that platform, right? Whether it be, you know, conversational AI or business intelligence or Salesforce data or HR data, right? And so that, you know, we, we do a lot of thinking in that space. Um, and the way we like to talk about it is, you know, if you were to like, let's take customer support as an example, right? There's a bunch of products out there that do customer support. Um, but we like to say things like, well, if you were to reimagine customer support, as a product built on top of something like Mattermost. And what I mean by something, I mean something that is channel-based or topic-based that fundamentally changes how your organization communicates. Like how would you redesign that product or how would you rebuild it, right? So we're, we're always fascinated by talking about those what-if scenarios. And then we're fascinated you know, by talking, you know, both me and my uh, co-founder are ex-Microsoft people. So we love to think in terms of things in terms of suites, right? So we always boil it down to like, 
you know, well, what suite of open source applications can you build on top of this platform, right? And how would they integrate and work together? And how would they look different? Um, and so for us, you know, that's really interesting to start thinking about that, especially when you start talking about wanting to productize um, some of these use cases that we see from our customers, right? The InfoSec security one is a great example, right? It's, it's sort of classic incident response. It's definitely more tailored towards a security mindset. But you know, what would it look like to productize that and build it as part of an application on top of Matterverse? And, and so for us, that's kind of what we're really excited about where that's going. And so we're really focused on that sort of what we call our, our developer toolkit and extending that in such a way that you can build you know, things beyond plugins, right? Beyond slash commands and simple plugins, but really rich uh, applications that fundamentally change the way people communicate. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. That, that, that's uh, a very compelling uh, response. Uh, it sounds like a bright future ahead. Uh, that does bring us to the end. Um, so we'll have time for uh, to answer some of these questions, but I uh, want to circle back on some of the key takeaways um, that are bulleted ahead of you here. Um, you know, real-time communication um, where data sovereignty, security, and autonomy is, is key. I mean, that to me is, uh, is, is such a sweet spot for Mattermost. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, know, do you, I don't know if you want to touch on any more of these, Corey. Uh, sometimes I, I don't like reading the bullets that are on the screen, assuming that people are going to read them themselves. Um, no, but, I, think you, I think you hit the big ones. Like I said, just data sovereignty, autonomy, those are the things where we, where we know we do well. Um, um, sort of that DevOps integration tool set um, and just modern communication, right? Most, that's what organization. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, uh, here's contact information for Corey and myself. Um, a couple of uh, um, places to uh, dig deeper in an avenue to ask some more questions or, or your particular questions if you want to outside of uh, the structure of this webinar. Um, Miriam, can I hand it over to you to, uh, um, I don't know what we have for coming in for, for Q and A, but, uh, yes. if there's anything that you'd like us to address, we can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, before we get into, in, uh, before we get into Q and A, if you just want to go back to the previous slide. Um, yeah. So again, you can reach out to, uh, Dan and Corey. Next slide. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and you can check out uh, Mattermost is having an upcoming uh, webinar on powering JIRA uh, workflows with real-time messaging. And uh, again, a reminder that we will be sending out uh, these out to you with the links as well. So you can uh, sign up for that. And then of course, check out C Prime for a lot of uh, upcoming webinars. Uh, you can read our blog, download our white paper, case studies, uh, and then share with us what topics you might uh, like to see in the future webinar, ask us questions, give us feedback. And then importantly, follow us on social media because that's a really good place uh, to keep updated on our thought leadership on upcoming events uh, where we hope to uh, see you. Uh, so uh, join us on LinkedIn and uh, on Twitter. And uh, if you want to start and uh, entering your questions into the questions pane, uh, I can start uh, launching uh, questions for you. Uh, so I think one of the first questions, and there's a couple of people asking about that, uh, just maybe clarify. So uh, Mattermost in terms of the security. So it is a uh, server on-prem based uh, solution versus a SaaS uh, solution. Is this a correct statement? Yeah, that's correct. Today we're focused on-prem only. So we run on-prem on your own hardware, we run in your own private cloud, or we run in, in your AWS or, you know, AWS GovCloud or Azure GovCloud um, under your control. Okay, great. Uh, and then uh, one question is, uh, someone is wondering if there's going to be an option of creating uh, sub-channels in Mattermost? Yes. Uh, so, so there's, I mean, uh, what we call channel sidebar organization um, is something that is, is, uh, we talk a lot about. So I, I think the, the, it's some, yeah, so sub channels is something we talk a lot about how to organize the left hand side better, especially if you're sort of a super user and you're in lots of channels. Um, so I would, I, would, I would say if that's a subject that's really passionate, that you're really passionate about, I would encourage you to join our community server and talk about it in some of those channels. I think one of them is actually called Channel Cyborg Organization. Um, and it's, there's definitely some, some things that we want to accomplish there. 
Um, Subchannels is definitely um, one of them. Um, it's something we talk a lot about. How do we do that in a way um, that scales? Uh, but just also more in general, just channel sidebar organization, right? How do you how do you deal with private channels and public channels and and channels you don't want to receive notifications for? Do you want to sort them alphabetically or do you want to sort them by priority or by you know most important? Um, so yeah, you, you can't do sub channels today, but um, it's definitely something we're considering. Okay, and Corey, is this the, the community uh, room? Is that something that we can share uh, with our audience as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's just, yeah, it's just community.mattermost.com. It's actually, our, like I said, it's our own public facing Mattermost server um, um, where our entire community and our, um, our Mattermost staff sits. Um, it's a great way to sort of, if you want to interact with the staff or ask detailed questions, um, like I said, we, we try to keep, we try to be very open in terms of engaging our community. Um, and that community, you know, goes across all, sort of all sort of levels, right? It goes across customers, it goes across users, it goes across, you know, people contributing code. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a great way to join and interact and ask more detailed questions. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so we've come to the end of our time together. And again, I'd like to thank our speakers, uh, Corey Holland from Mattermost. Thank you so much uh, for providing really some great insights into you know, some of the communication challenges that enterprises are uh, facing these days and how you know, we can make those uh, teams and enterprises a little more uh, efficient. Uh, and I wanna thank Dan also for an insightful uh, interview. Uh, I think uh, we all learned a lot from that. And of course, we'd like to thank you very much, our audience, for taking the time out of your, uh, what I know is our busy days to join us. And we really hope that you took something of value with you. And we really hope to see you again uh, on a Mattermost webinar, on a C-Prime webinar. We appreciate your time very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again.